settle down. A very good afternoon all, and I'm very delighted to welcome you all for today's session on exploring Yog Nidra from a scientific lens. It's particularly special today, as this Friday's lecture session has coincided with National Engineering Day. And what would be a bit better opportunity than this day to have an interdisciplinary discourse of yog and modern sciences. It's an honor and privilege to have Professor Rahul Kirk from the Department of Computer Science and Engineering and the former head of National Resource Center for Value Education in Engineering in the Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi. We are privileged to welcome you, sir, and thank you for graciously accepting our invite. I welcome Dr. Ayan Acharya, sir, Program Officer and the head of the, head of the Teaching Department, Muraji Desai National Institute of Yoga. Sir has always been very supportive and, and, and encouraging in our endeavors. I also welcome Muhammad Tayyab Balam, sir, Communication and Documentation Officer, MDNIY. And we are very grateful to you, sir, for your valuable inputs in the program and for always being the pillar of support. I also welcome the entire staff, our students, our friends who have joined online, uh, online for, uh, for this session. So as per the tradition of the Institute, we will begin the session with prayers. So for that, I would like to invite Ms. Madhu Khurana to conduct the prayers. Please, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Sabhi ko namaskar. तो कार्यक्रम का आरंभ हम प्रार्थना के साथ करेंगे सभी से अनुरोध है कमर गर्दन को सीधा करके बैठ जाएं दोनों हाथ नमस्कार मुद्रा में आंखें कोमलता से बंद तीन बार ओंकार तत्पश्चात प्रार्थना लंबा गहरा श्वास लें श्वास छोड़ते हुए ओंकार आंखें खोले धन्यवाद थैंक यू मैम सो नाउ टू फॉर्मली बिगिन विद द प्रोग्राम I now would like to invite Muhammad Tayyab Alam sir communication and documentation officer Muraji Desai National Institute of Yog to present the welcome address please sir Uh, 
Uh, good afternoon, all of you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Suban. Uh, I've given the responsibility to say a few words about uh, uh, today's uh, esteemed guest, uh, respected uh, uh, Rahul Gaksa. Uh, before uh, uh, introducing uh, to the guest, uh, I would like to say, I would like to say something to our students. Ko. जो DYC के हैं, diploma के हैं, MSc के हैं, BSc के हैं। uh, Whenever you people come for such lecture, lecture, uh, I think sir, you people should note down uh, the valuable points. Uh, those points will enrich you. Uh, that point should be uh, the part of your uh, writing, uh, answer writing, uh, and uh, of course uh, your syllabus uh, and uh, your curricula. But uh, today we have with us uh, the respected Professor Rahul Gaksa, uh, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Indian Institute of Technology, uh, New Delhi. On behalf of Murarji Desai, the National Institute of Yoga, and my own behalf, uh, it's my privilege uh, to welcome you, sir. I also welcome. Uh, I also welcome uh, respected Dr. Ayanacharya sir, Program Officer of the Institute, and our uh, Adhyapakgan, our Sabi Vidyarthiyun ka bhi bhoat bhoat welcome hai, aaj ki Friday lecture mein. Uh, Professor uh, Rahul Gag sir, uh, is from uh, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, uh, former head uh, National Resource Center of <coughs> Value Education and Engineering, Indian Institute of Technology, New Delhi. Such current areas of in, <laughs> interest encompasses a fascinating blend of disciplines, including neuroimaging, yogic neuroscience, and uh, machine learning. His research explores the convergence of science and science and the ancient wisdom, shedding light uh, on profound effects of yoga, yoga nidra, on the human mind and the body. Prior, uh, prior to this uh, role, he he held leadership uh, positions at uh, Opera Solution India and uh, IBM's T.J. Watson Research Center, New York, where Sir research delved into high-performance computing and machine learning techniques for neuroimaging data analysis. Currently, Sir is actively engaged uh, in several research uh, projects that range from. Uh, fMRI data analysis methods to yoga neuroscience, yogic neuroscience, uh, computational Sanskrit uh, linguistic and uh, posture estimation and tracking. Uh, his approach increases students to explore their innate strength uh, and adapt problems to align with their interest. In addition to this, such extensive research and academic contribution, Sir has received several awards and honors throughout his career, including the best paper award at uh, IPDPS 2009 and recognition from IBM Research uh, for his contribution to the Blue Gene Project. Thank you, sir, uh, for accepting our invitation uh, for Friday lecture. <laughs> With these few words, uh, now I would like to invite our today's uh, esteemed guest, in fact, esteemed uh, speaker, uh, Dr. Rahul Garsas, uh, to say, in fact, uh, to elaborate on today's topic, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for, uh, for, for, for marking such a beginning for the session. So before we go ahead with today's session, we would like to present a herbal plant pot to our expert of the day. So I request Dr. Ayan Acharya, sir, to please present the herbal plant pot to our esteemed guest, Professor Rahul Garg, sir. We may now proceed with the lecture session enriched by the expertise and wisdom of today's expert. Please welcome Professor Rahul Garg with a ra warm round of applause. Please, sir.
can we all see this can you switch off the light here so today i'll be talking about scientific exploration of yoga nidra uh, meditation practice this is a joint work with a number of people dr rohit verma from aims dr anju dhawan from aims dr suruchi and dr sonika thakral above who was a student at that time but now he has earned a degree, post doctor yeah doctorate degree saloni tandon khushbu and mohammad imran So here is the overview of the talk. I'll start with you know brief introduction to yoga nidra, and then you know I'll just briefly talk about the initial pilot study that uh, inspired the subsequent study, and finally an EEG based study on the yoga nidra. <coughs> so how much time do I have? half an hour hmm? yeah okay so what is yoga nidra uh, i guess the audience here would be familiar with this so we generally know that there are these three states of consciousness the waking state that we are all right now but you know we also have this dream sleep state which is the rem sleep and also the deep sleep state that we experience every day and these uh, sleep states have distinctive patterns of you know the brain activity if you put eeg cap around it and measure it you will see different eeg patterns but if you look at the yoga literature they also talk about the fourth state of consciousness they call it turiya in mandukya upanishad it's qualified as a state of wakeful alert deep sleep so a person who experiencing this state is alert wakeful but also relaxed deeply relaxed as in the deep sleep so this is something uh, this i have taken from uh, verse number 7 of mandukya upanishad this describes that fourth state it does not call it it does not call it by the name turiya but essentially in the preceding verses it talks about the other three states the wakeful state the 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 dream sleep state and the deep sleep state and here uh it talks about you know uh turiya is the fourth state in this state consciousness is not inwards not it is turned outwards it should be uh, so it's neither turn inward nor outwards nor both it is undifferentiated beyond the sphere of cognition and non cognition and this state cannot be experienced through the senses or known by inference incomprehensible unthinkable indescribable this is pure consciousness the real self it is a cessation of all phenomena tranquil blissful without a second this real self is to be realized that's the aim they say so uh, but you know this one does not really use the word yog nidra or turiya per se but i have taken these verses from yog taravali of acharya shankar and uh, there he actually makes use of the word nidra and uh, the first one talks about the state of yoga nidra due to excellent reflection on the indwelling self the previous attachment of a person go away and they attain a state of conscious sleep yoga nidra which makes them give up all the thoughts of the universe so that's how he has defined the yoga nidra and then how to get it by constant practice the ever benevolent yog nidra appears in those yogis whose resolves choices the effects of actions have been completely uprooted right and the next one he talks about 
connects it to the Turiya state that we just talked about in the Mandukya Upanishad. He's saying, oh friend, getting convinced of and getting established in the state of Turiya, which is beyond the three states of Vishwa, Tejasa and Pragya, uh, experience the bliss of Yognidra that is full of consciousness, free of doubts and inexplicable. So, you know, these, these uh, references in the yogic literature is actually talking about, you know, two different states. One is the state of Yognidra, which is like a deep sleep state. So, person is in deep sleep, relaxed, without any thoughts. In deep sleep, when we are in a deep sleep, do we have any thoughts? No, we don't have any thought. It's just blank. And that's the state, but the person is aware, blissful. And... Uh, yeah, and it talks about how to get there. The previous, no, no, the previous verse that I talked about says that when you are free of all the sankalpas, the resolves that you have, you stop, you know, worrying about the future, thinking about the past, all that, you know, planning your future, planning your activities for the next day. If all of that stops, there are no resolves, then you slowly get into that state. So the question comes, is it really a mumbo jumbo? Is the state really true? Is it really... True as it is just some, you know, poetic expression that people have written out there. And any thoughts on this? Anyone has any comments? Hmm? I think here you should, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sir, uh, you said whenever we sleep left at night, we don't have any thoughts, but why sometimes we, uh, uh, we thought some previous memories at night and some different types of, I would say, uh, Dreams. Yeah, dreams come. So, yeah, so that's a different state. So if you look at steep states, there's a state called, what is called a REM sleep, which is rapid eye movement kind of a sleep. And that sleep, that state is like a state where you get dreams. But there's also what is called an REM sleep, where the eyes are not moving. And that it has multiple stages, stage one, stage two, stage three. And uh, when you are in the stage three, the deeper state of that end them sleep, that is a state when you are free of the thoughts, right? That is a state when you don't have any awareness of, you know, anything at all. And that is a state that we talked about here as, you know, in the Manduki Upanishad, before the verse that I showed you as the Nidra state. So Nidra, when this referred, it actually refers to a state of deep sleep, not the state of dream sleep. That is a, I think Tejasa or something. That's the dream sleep state. Okay. So, yeah. It seems contradictory, right? When, when you are in deep sleep, you don't have any thoughts. But at the same time, it says that you are conscious. So, is it possible that you are conscious also and you are in deep sleep also? And how is it possible? Yes, so that is the fourth state that he's talking about. That is the state of yoga nidra that these verses are talking about. And that's the most natural question that will come to you, that how is it possible? Because when we are awake, we are full of thoughts. So is it possible that we are awake, we don't have any thoughts, and our body is fully rested as in deep sleep? So that's the question I'm asking. Is it really possible? <laughs> yes, but how do we know that? So... Yeah, so this is a state uh, of yoga nidra. Let me, yeah, let's look at this. So due to excellent reflection on the indwelling self, the previous attachments of the person go away and they attain a state of conscious sleep, right? conscious sleep. Which means sleep is not referring to the dream sleep state, it's referring to a deep sleep state and conscious. Conscious means you are aware, you're still you know that you are sleeping in a deep sleep state. So that is the state of yoga nidra. Right? So that's the question. That's the you know fundamental question before us. That you know the yogic texts talk about this, and not only single texts, multiple texts talk about it. If you look at yogis, even the modern yogis also talk about such a state. Right? So this is not something which used to happen like 2000 years back or 5000 years back. Some you know, people as much as you know 50 years back, they are talking about this. So is that really possible or are they lying to us?
So, you know, if a person is in a state of deep sleep, then how do we know whether the person is? I mean, I could be just lying down with my eyes closed and I can say I was in a deep sleep state. But, you know, I cannot fake it because, you know, what you can do is you can put an EEG cap around me and you can measure the signal, the brainwave that emanate. And different sleep states have different EEG signatures. So here, when you see the graph, we have an awake state and then we have the first stage of deep sleep, the second N1, N2, N3. N3 is the deepest state of sleep. And then the dream sleep, which is called the REM sleep, that is there. And you can do signal processing on this and look at the various powers of the different spectra. So if you are fully awake and alert, that is fully awake and relaxed, that's alpha. So when you look at the brain wave, they will have dominance of alphas. When you are fully alert, they will be have dominance of betas. When you are highly focused, gammas. If you are in sleep stage one and two, mostly theta. And finally, if you are in sleep stage, deep sleep state, N3 and N4, then it will be mostly slow wave delta. So whether a person is sleeping or not, and what stage of sleep the person is in, you can easily figure out by putting an EEG cap and measuring the brain wave. So that's easily done. But how do you know whether the person is conscious or not? So we do sleep every day, we know that. And you can also measure, you can go to a sleep lab and measure. So here is the hypothesis about, so this is a paper by Parker and Bharti. I'll talk a little bit more about this later. This was published in 2013. And uh, I've just taken it verbatim from the paper. So he talks about different levels of Samadhi. So, you know, or different levels of Yoga Nidra. So there's a level one, two, three, just like sleep stages. They also describe the levels of Yoga Nidra. So they talk about level three. During level three, the practice of level one results in transition to Yoga Nidra or a state of Abhava Pratyaya. So which means nothingness. There's no physical world, you know, nothing experience is being experienced. That is a negation of cognition in the cave of the heart center. During this state, the brain may initially produce theta waves followed by delta waves. And the participant experiences this sleep but remains aware of his or her surroundings. Attainment of this level may require instruction by an advanced teacher. So there's a very specific hypothesis that Parker, Bharti and Fernandez have proposed that if this state is achievable by anybody, you can put an EEG cap, you can measure the delta waves and you can also measure awareness of the person. So, but you know, that doesn't say it is possible. So here you see a picture of Swami Rama of Himalayas and he was instructed by his guru to go to the US and try to, you know, convince the world that whatever is mentioned in the yoga text is actually indeed correct. Uh, so here he is in the Meninger Foundation. They are uh, Alice Green and Dale Walters doing experiments, you know, preparing for experiments there. And they did this experiment, Swami Rama. So this, you know, there's a magazine called the Probe Magazine. If you can see the thing in the circle is meditation, a state of sleepless sleep. So they, in the lab, they actually measured it. So I'll, I'll take this, I've taken this verbatim from this magazine. Uh, Swami astounded the scientist at Dr. Green's laboratory when he proved that he can produce delta waves. Remember I talked about sleep staging and delta waves, stage four, stage three, long regarded as a sign of deep sleep while awake. He produced delta wave for 25 minutes, then awoke within quotes and reported accurately what, he had, what had happened in the room during his state of sleepless sleep. So this is the first documented evidence, at least in the modern times that I know of, uh, that, uh, you know, that shows the existence of this state. Uh, there are many other things he also did. You can refer to this, you know, the reference I've given, you can read about it. But uh, he's not the only one. His disciple, Swami Veda Bharati, uh, also went to an institute in California in the US and his student, Dean Radin, I mean the student, uh, I think Dean Radin was a student or early investigator at that time. He replicated exactly those experiments that were done on Swami Rama. And here is what uh, has been reported. So during these trials, in addition to duplicating Swami Rama's experiment, Radin accidentally discovered 
that Swami Veda remained almost perpetually in a state of yoga nidra, his brain producing theta and delta waves even with his eyes open, talking and moving around. There is no current explanation in neuroscience for this, his ability to do that. Unfortunately, none of these demonstrations were published in the peer-reviewed scientific literature. So that tells us about the state of the science today. Here is a person who has gone to a lab, who has, you know, through these experiments, demonstrated something completely extraordinary, never known to science. That, you know, physiologically, when you look at the signals, he's like in a deep sleep state, but he's talking and walking and everything. <coughs> and that thing could not get published in the scientific literature. Otherwise, you know, if anything like this, this should have been a Nobel Prize discovery, you know. Discovering it's a new state of consciousness that has been discovered. But uh, yeah, that's the state of the science these days. And this is a reference from which I've taken this quote. <clears throat> and then, you know, Parker talks about in his papers, by the way, Parker is a disciple of Swami Veda Bharati. He is in the US, in one of the Minnesota or somewhere. And apparently he can also, you know, he's been a practitioner for a long time. So what he says is, at this stage, Swami Veda's experimental hypothesis about Turiya is <clears throat> with the waking sensorium and body activity, the EEG would remain flat as the activity of mind will have ceased altogether. So, you know, this is again a hypothesis. This has never been demonstrated in the lab conditions, <clears throat> although there may be some anecdotal evidences. But <clears throat> what it actually seems is something, again, revolutionary. If anybody could demonstrate Turiya, what does it mean? That you are performing your day-to-day -day activities, but there is no EEG signal. So the neurons in the brain, the neural signal is not happening. So you don't need your brain to function normally if you achieve that high state of consciousness. And that is remarkable. That is really, really fundamental and remarkable thing if, if that can be discovered and this can be you know, demonstrated. And... Uh, that will change the way we look at science because science understands very little about consciousness. You know, yoga is actually a very deep science in my view. Uh, but let's come back to this hypothesis. So again, from Bharti and Parker paper of 2013, he talks about this specific hypothesis in Turiya. He says, Turiya is a state during which the highest form of meditation, Samadhi, called Isampragyata Samadhi or Nirvikalpa Samadhi, uh, becomes one's normal state of awareness is maintained all the times. It is hypothesized that at this point, EEG readings may register no discernible electrical activity. This hypothesis is yet to be demonstrated under controlled conditions. So, you know, these are the kind of things that our yogis say, uh, you know, and these yogis, you know, Swami Veda Bharati was there in this planet in his body not, not very long ago. And Swami Rama also, you know, was here not very long ago and they have demonstrated such extraordinary things. And it can change the science fundamentally, but somehow whatever has happened, they are not really getting into the mainstream science, you know, even after all the experimentation and all. So you can read this paper by Parker. He talks about the reasons why this kind of thing could not get into science. But today that situation is not there, which was there in 1960s. So today it's very different. So in the next uh, 10 minutes, I would just like to talk about some of the experiments that we have done on the Yoga Nidra. And I recognize I'm out of time, so I'll just go through it very, very quickly and then leave some time for discussion. Okay. So, so far I was talking about the Yoga Nidra state. Now, what is a Yoga Nidra practice? So Yoga Nidra practice is a practice that is designed to get you to Yoga Nidra state eventually. If you do it every day for a long period of time and you got some grace and all that thing happens, everything goes right, then you might achieve that state of yoga nidra in your life. Right? That's what they say. But what is it? It's an audio guided meditation. Need not be audio guided. You can do it on your own also if you remember the instructions. When consistently practiced, it will eventually lead to yoga nidra or turiya state. But it very quickly, you know, before going to turiya, you can actually induce Pratyahara state, much, much before that. You can also call it a method of conscious relaxation. How many people have tried yoga nidra? Okay, everybody knows. So I don't have to go through this then. Okay, fine. So let's skip that. So this, 
can skip that. So you know that, right? Okay, good. So this practice was, you know, as far as I know, popularized by Bihar School of Yoga, Swami Satyanand Saraswati. Also, I, I've, I could trace historically three distinct traditions. Bihar School, the most common, the Himalayan tradition of Swami Rama, and then uh, Swami Sri Dev Prabhuji, not very well known. But now almost all the yoga schools that are there, they talk about it, they teach it, they, they do all of that. And the, in the US, what they do is, you know, they take the practice, give it a new name, and they say, we discovered it, right? So, uh, I mean, yeah, so NSDR is another name for Yoga Nidra that is very popular in the US. You look at the Google CEO, he doesn't say, I practice Yoga Nidra, he says, I practice NSDR. And I rest is another variant, but uh, everybody would agree here that we have gone through yoga nidra. Helps in relaxation, stress management, jet lag. You know, many people take melatonin, but if you know yoga nidra, you can do it, and it will be very good. At IIT Delhi, I've shared it with some of the students. They find it very helpful in their anxiety, stress, and all. So, what is the question that we want to explore? Does yoga nidra actually induce a sleep-like state? And if it does, does it really give you the benefit that sleep is supposed to give you? So one of the things that sleep does to you is improved cognitive performance. So if you're very tired and you're given a task where you have to think and you know solve a puzzle, you will not be able to do it. But if you are deeply rested, you slept, woke up fresh in the morning, you give this puzzle, you can solve it like this. Right? So that's a cognitive performance. And then we can also go inside the brain and ask, what are the brain areas that get activated when you're doing this? And what does it really mean? So I'll start with the pilot study. This is what we did, what's called fMRI. So this is a, like, you know, very sophisticated instrument that is there to see what is happening inside the brain. You know, very high magnetic fields. One subject, two scans. We use the Bihar School of Yoga, Advanced Yoga Nidra, 45 minute instructions by Swami Niranjan and Saraswati Ji. What did we find? One thing we found, what areas in the brain are getting activated? Language areas, the auditory cortex, Broca's area, Wernicke's area. And this is what you would expect because, you know, you are listening to the instructions, so your auditory and language areas will get activated. No big deal. What else we found? Somatosensory cortex. So here, there is a cortex called the somatosensory. If I move my thumb, some activity will happen here. If I move the other thumb, the activity will happen on the other side. And it is mapped, our entire body, somatosensory, the image, wherever I touch, a corresponding point here would get activated. So this is already known from neuroscience. And we see activation there. And it is also not surprising because they say rotate your consciousness to different parts of the body. So when you are paying attention to a particular part, you would expect the same region to get activated. Okay. Interestingly, what we are seeing also are areas related to emotions, empathy, and those areas get activating. And that is one of the functions of the sleep. When you do sleep, then there's something called memory consolidation, emotional memory consolidation. So if you had some, you know, not so pleasant experience in the day, in the night you might get a nightmare or you might get a dream about it. So that is a process of emotional memory consolidation that happens. But during this yoga nidra, there's no explicit emotional instruction, but still those areas are getting activated. So maybe some sleep functions are happening there. And then, interestingly, when you look at, you know, chakras, when you visualize chakras or you meditate on chakras, this area called PCC, which is for self-referential processing, gets activated. So we don't understand it very much, but that is something interesting. But anyway, so this was just a single pilot on single subject, but we did it on more subjects. Here we looked at 30 experienced meditators and... 31 age and gender match controls. And uh, now we use a 20 minute yoga nidra by Shishi Ravi Shankarji. And uh, yeah, so this is the protocol. They will go into the scanner. There's a five minute resting state scan. They just lie with eyes closed. Yeah. And then they do a 20 minute yoga nidra and then again five minute resting state. So here you can see, you know, different instructions of yoga nidra, different time points. We have divided it into stages. All the breathing instructions we have taken out. And uh, yeah. So what brain areas get activated? So, you know, this is a very heavy picture. I don't expect all of you to understand, but 
basically what we are seeing is again language and auditory areas that are getting activated which is as expected and here on the left on on the d you see the meditators and e you see controls and they are very similar when you compare meditators and controls we almost so this is the graph that compares meditators and controls you can see pretty much no no difference except for this area here you can see a tiny red dot and that area is what is called thalamus so when we get thalamus is an area which is like a gateway to our brains sensory gateway to our brains so when we see anything the signal comes into eyes there's an optic nerve that takes it all the way to the thalamus and from thalamus it goes to the vision processing areas so when we sleep the thalamus shuts down so visual input even if it comes to the eyes it goes all the way till thalamus and doesn't go any forward so that's the role of thalamus in sleep and we are seeing meditators are in the state of yog nidra the thalamus is more activated so maybe a state of pratyahara is actually happening we can you know hypothesize using this data but interestingly what we also see is some of these areas are related to emotional processing so again maybe emotional processing you know memory consolidation is happening so yeah mostly somatosensory and motor cortex which is what you expect because you are doing body rotation but uh, yeah uh yeah thalamus so maybe yeah so those two things hypothesis that we started about about yognidra does it lead to a state of pratyahara maybe yes maybe thalamus at least in the expert meditators and uh, maybe a little bit of emotional memory consolidation so yeah i'll very quickly go over i don't have time to talk more about default mode networks but essentially this is a you know accidental discovery and it's a very surprising discovery in neuroscience of these brain areas called the default networks and they have been associated with mind wandering you know and you know future planning past recall and those kinds of things so we studied how the dmn works while doing the yog nidra practice and uh, here we are comparing the controls with meditators so it's a bit uh, involved picture so excuse me for that there's a lot of information So if you look at the top row, uh, here you see different stages of yoga nidra. So RS3 means before the yoga nidra started, the resting state free, and T1, T2, T3, T4 are four stages of yoga nidra, and post is after the yoga nidra. So you can see in pre and in the post, there is no difference between the controls and the meditators. The brain is working exactly the same. But in T1, T2, T3, what we see is that meditators have a smaller connectivity as compared to the controls the bottom picture also shows the same thing for different brain areas and again we are seeing the same effect here that in pre and post there is no difference in connectivity but when we look at during yog nidra meditators and controls are behaving differently meditators have smaller connectivity and these graphs here also show the same thing in a different manner that you know it shows the distribution of the connectivity and you can again see that meditators have smaller connectivity so when we compare pre versus the meditation then we something we get something very interesting so what we see is in the resting state before the yog nidra meditators connectivity goes down when they are doing the yog nidra but for control the connectivity goes up so what could this possibly mean that maybe when meditators are doing yoga nidra in the scanner they are more quiet they are more peaceful they are less mind wandering but when you compare it controls they are more mind wandering right they are more so which is very interesting result you know uh so yeah summary of the results no change between the expert meditators and the novices in the pre stage and uh, during the yog nidra practice the connectivity of control increases but the connectivity of meditators decreases what is the impact of hours of practice we again see that the more you have done the yogic practice or meditation practice in the past the more decrease you will see in the dmn connectivity which is also very very interesting so yeah so this is what it is and uh, so this is the first study that has happened in first neuroimaging study on yog nidra and we are seeing that there are changes in the default mode networks which is related to mind wandering and uh, 
also many of the illnesses like you know schizophrenia or depression and all they may have an impact on the dmn connectivity and through yoga nidra it is possible that we are kind of influencing that so many studies have reported for example yoga nidra helps in anxiety it helps in depression so it actually gives us maybe a clue as to why these practices at least this particular practice may be helpful and how it actually works so should i stop here or can i just take 5 more minutes what do you Five more minutes. Okay, so I'm, I'll just go real, real fast on this. So that concludes the yoga nidra imaging study. We also did a, uh, a EEG study. Again, this is Dr. Rohit in the lab, and we want to check if yoga nidra induces a sleep-like state, and then does it improve cognitive abilities, and does it induce deep relaxation? And here you used a classical music, Indian classical music as a control, and we had a very rigorous crossover design. and essentially you can see uh the results uh that uh yeah so post yoga nidra as compared to pre the performance in these cognitive tasks so on the left you see the stroop on the this one is the stroop task and here you can see before yoga nidra you are taking longer to respond after yoga nidra you are taking less time to respond similarly there is another task for the trail making task And there also you are seeing a significant reduction in the time to respond uh, before versus after. So it does seem to improve the yoga nidra session does seem to improve cognitive performance. And uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, so this is the you know we also done EEG synchrony analysis and we are finding that during yoga nidra the brain is more synchronize as compared to the classical music but when you look at the sleep staging the eeg we found that you know in yoga nidra we see the sign of delta but also in the classical music we saw the sign of delta so then we asked the people who came that what did you do so in yoga nidra they said they were doing the yoga nidra and they were relaxed and they were sometimes going to the border of the sleep and coming back but in classical music there were many people who have no interest in music and they said we found it so boring that we felt asleep so we didn't find any difference between classical and yoga nidra the mechanism what they were doing was different but from the signal point of view not much difference but anyway so these are some interesting pointers and uh, you know more research is needed to sort of you know build upon that and go forward and yoga nidra in the yogic theory it says it's a practice that can get you to the yogi nidra state in turiya and uh, if we can get any yogis who can get that state i think it will be worthwhile uh, to measure that and demonstrate the existence of the yogi nidra state in a lab condition world today is very different from what it was in 1960s now people are scientists are much more open to these ideas because a lot of publications on yoga and mindfulness are already there so this may be the right time to do that but even if you look at the practice uh it you know a lot of research studies have shown you know good benefit but you know they are not very well designed studies not very rigorous studies so if people can do very rigorous well designed studies to show that okay it's helpful in anxiety it's helpful in you know insomnia it's helpful in you know depression those kind of things i think this will be very valuable because in today's time the world is struggling with all these mental health issues everywhere you see you know it's much alarming you know and if you can provide tools for people to deal with this i think it will, will do a lot of service to people so i'll stop here thanks to the team uh, many people were involved in getting it all together uh and thanks to the national resource center in value education and engineering they they supported this work we have you know they have a phd program as well in in this kinds of things and yeah thank you so much sir for presenting such an engaging session if there are any questions if there is any question that any one of you want to ask please do so while taking the amara scans how did you give the yoga nidra instruction because as we know electrical equipment or any metal equipment cannot be listened to yeah yeah and uh, if you go in the amara machine even the person speaking 
the person hearing might not might not get the clear instruction. So how did you exactly perform that? Yeah, so very good question. So what happens is, you know, there are these uh, acoustic, what is it called? Uh, acoustic headphones which do not have a coil. So there is a, you know, just a air tube that goes inside. So MR, you know, that machine, if you also get the equipment for that, then there are these headphones that you can connect. And they, with that, you can actually listen to those instructions. So they're very well, de especially designed for the MR machine. And same, when the person speaks, also there's a microphone that can convey the thing back. But yes, a normal mic you cannot take here. So you have to get a special MR compartment. Yes. Yeah. Hmm? So uh, one we have just submitted. So I guess within a couple of days, it will be out in bio archive. The, the 30 subjects, 60 subject study, 61 subject. The EG one, the student graduated. So you can find it in her PhD in the master's thesis, but she didn't get time to kind of you know publish it after this. So that's the best place you can get it. And both the pilot as well as the EG study, you can get her in thesis, Saloni Tandon at IIT Delhi. But if you need a copy, I can share it with you. You can send me an email and you can share. Yeah. More important music for, is, uh, you know, is silence more important or music? So, I mean, uh, like uh, when we uh, play a yoga, yeah, oh. it is uh, some sound and vibrations playing around. So, uh, is uh, silence a more beautiful practice to perform or uh, yoga? Oh, we are performing yoga so that we can be silent, right? <laughs> So if you can be silent internally, that is the best thing you can do. If you can be silent, then you don't need any of this. Sir, I mean, uh, in context with uh, you know, uh, the slides uh, here shown like uh, schizophrenia and you know uh, that episodes on treatments have a good. Hmm. So uh, in that case, when uh, someone is you know, in that stage, uh, hmm. what helps uh, them move? Yeah. So you know. That, I guess, you know, I'll go with what is written in the yogic books that, you know, you have to do it under the guidance of a suitable instructor because science has not come to a level yet where they can actually give you very explicit, you know, guidance on that, that, you know, for this particular condition, what should we do? There is some research on mindfulness and all, but on yoga, in yoga nidra, very little research has happened. So if you ask me for this particular illness, is this a good practice? I would say you talk to a yoga teacher. I think they are going to be better people. But yes, if this kind of work builds up and there are a lot of research like this, then in the future we might be able to say more with more. These are just very initial pointers. So we should not take it as a medical guide or a therapeutic guide or anything. Yes? Uh, what are your views on Jopnik study society? Swami Vedhati. Mm -hmm. So, the EEG machine was not able to, but was able to record the EEG frequencies that generated at the stage of Kuriya. No, no, no. So, Swami Veda Bharati, at least what I know is, they recorded a Yoga Nidra state. Yeah. So, the machine was not sensitive enough to record the frequencies or the... It was no, they recorded delta, right? Sir. Yeah. Theta and delta. He is actually asking uh, the uh, hypothesis of his student. Huh. And he said that uh, the uh, ECG might not record uh, the frequency of the EEG. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so he is asking that uh, what are the ways to make the machine uh, more sensitive? Oh, that's a hypothesis. That's not been demonstrated yet. So when that, the, the hypothesis is neurons will not be firing. So neurons will not be active. That is what the hypothesis is. Yeah. Dean Radin. Dean Radin. Dean. Oh, which student? Uh, his, uh, his Stephen pa Anthony Parker. Yeah. So this Parker that you see in this here, that's a student. Yeah. My question is, in fact, it is my concern. Like uh, internationally, people are using this uh, yoga nidra and yoga practices in uh, such a, I mean, uh, like I rest, uh, they are using I rest, they are using NSDR. 
as well as they are also using mindfulness in lots of therapies. But uh, as it is the Indian uh, practices, why we are not able to use uh, these practices as a therapy? So what should we do uh, to make it uh, as a therapeutic? I think uh, we need uh, more research in this area because the way our hospitals and you know academic institutions are set up, they would want an evidence-based, you know, if a yogi comes and says something, they are not going to believe it. They want to do an evidence base. So once that evidence base is there, then they were likely to be more open. So that research has to happen. And I guess, yeah. I mean, I mean uh, lots of papers are there. In yoga practices, especially uh, for the yoga practices, mm. India is the country. Uh, Absolutely. It should be the country which is publishing the most. It should be. Yes. You guys have to do it. Right? <laughs> Still, we are not, I mean, uh, we are not using it as a therapy. It's actually, I would not say that because, you know, the it's not being, you know, systematically used as a therapy in the hospitals. But I know many people who just use it and they have told me, you know, in fact, there's a person who was a music director of MTV. He had fibromyalgia, chronic pain. And he followed certain yoga therapies, certain yoga practices, and he got completely cured. He was on opioids for a very long time, you know. So the Indians are actually are the force behind this yoga movement in the West, in addition to, you know, many other things. But they are also because... They recognize the value, they, they actually use it. But yes, they are not doing research. That's where we need to build up a little more. Yeah. Yes? Sir, as you practice yoga, they have the same thing at the fourth level of sleep. Sir, they have the same thing in the practice of the Himalaya. They have the same thing in the Himalaya. Well, you know, आप लोगों के लिए तो ज्यादा पॉसिबल होना चाहिए क्योंकि मैंने चार साल इंजीनियरिंग पढ़ी कुछ नहीं किया बस इंजीनियरिंग पढ़ी उसके बाद फिर दो साल और पढ़ी फिर तीन साल और पढ़ी अगर इतने साल में योगा करता तो क्या पता मुझे चूरिया मिल जाती तो योगा के इंस्टीट्यूट के स्टूडेंट्स के लिए तो ऐसा होना चाहिए एक्चुअली यस दो डूइंग पी एच डी इन योगा मे बी दे कैन सेट अप ए गोल कि मैं यू नो कुछ पब्लिश वगैरह नहीं करूंगा मैं तुरिया या योग निद्रा अचीव करूंगा आप मुझे मेजर कर लो डिग्री दे दो So I hope after this talk, some people will be inspired to actually aim for Turiya. If not Turiya, at least Yogi Nidra. <laughs> yeah. Sir, is yawning is the signal of sleep and what is the main cause of yawning? I wouldn't be able to tell you that. I think, you know, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, you have to look at. I'm, I'm an engineer by training, so I'm not a medical person. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for presenting such an enriching session. This not just added to the understanding of yoga nidra, but also inspired us to view it with a fresh perspective. Your insights will certainly continue to spark curiosity and exploration among our attendees. Thank you, sir. And thank you. I thank the attendees for the active participation. Now, I would like to request Dr. Ayan Acharya, sir, Program Officer and Head of Department of Teaching for his remarks on the session. Please, sir. गुड आफ्टरनून टू एवरी वन आज के मुख्य वक्ता राहुल सर 
faculty members of the institute and the students main aaj ki ye jo lecture tha uski remarks ke liye main yahan nahi khada hu isliye ki shayad usme remarks karna uh, jo topic unhone jo yahan deliberate kiya hai uh, it's not so simple and uh, बहुत अथेंटिक भी नहीं होगा कि मैं उसके बारे में ज्यादा कमेंट करूं। एक ही बात कहना चाहूंगा ही हैज चूजन और दे हैव कंडक्टेड दैट पर्टिकुलर रिसर्च ऑन योग निद्रा विच इज वेरी यूनिक जैसे सर ने भी कहा हम भी जितना जो रिसर्च के बारे में थोड़ा बहुत जानते हैं या पढ़ते हैं तो योग निद्रा के बारे में हार्डली वी फाइंड एनी रिसर्च work or published work on uh, <coughs> yog nidra specially aam taur par hum karte to hai roz roz jab bhi practice karte hain to uske sath yog nidra ka thoda bahut in the form of shavasana or full fledged 30 minutes or 45 minutes ka yog nidra to karte hi hai hum uska benefit bhi apna apna level par apna apna experience ke hisab se hum पाते ही लेकिन मोर और लेस जहां तक मैं समझता हूं कि जो मेडिटेशन की जो जितना रिसर्च वर्क है उसकी जो आउटकम है दैट मे बी कंपेरेबल टू टू सम एक्सटेंट टू दी योग निद्रा इफेक्ट आल्सो बट इन जनरल हम कुछ भी योगिक प्रैक्टिस करते हैं हम चाहे वो आसना प्राणायामा प्रत्याहारा मेडिटेशन और इस तरह की कुछ स्पेशल प्रैक्टिसेस जो भी करते हैं ओवर ए पीरियड ऑफ टाइम हमारे जो ऑटोनॉमस नर्वस सिस्टम है उसमें जो पैरासिम्पथेटिक जो विंग है वो उसका डोमिनेंस बढ़ता जाता है पैरासिम्पथेटिक डोमिनेंस होने से क्या होता है कि हमारे जो जितना भी फिजियोलॉजिकल फंक्शन है सो कॉल्ड नॉर्मल है हमारे बीपी होगी हार्ट रेट होगी पल्स रेट होगी ब्रीदिंग का होगा वो सब बहुत कम हो जाता है और रिड्यूस्ड हो जाता है डिमिनिश हो जाता है वैसे देखा जाए तो तो मेडिकल टर्म्स में वो कहेंगे कि ये आदमी तो लो बीपी का आदमी या बीमार घोषित हो सक कर सकते हैं लेकिन ऐसा नहीं होता है अभी से फॉर एग्जाम्पल हम आमतौर पर कहते हैं कि ब्रीदिंग का है सिक्सटीन सिक्सटीन टाइम्स पर मिनट हम ब्रीदिंग करते हैं तो जो लॉन्ग टर्म प्रैक्टिस है उसमें हो सकता है कि ओनली टेन ब्रीदिंग हो सकता है कुछ लोगों का आठ हो सकता है कुछ लोगों का छः तक भी हो सकता है दैट डजेंट मीन दैट दैट पर्सन इज एब नॉर्मल और डिजीज पर्सन इसलिए हम अक्सर कहते भी है सुनते भी है और समझते भी है कि योगा इज प्राइमरली एन एक्सपीरियंशियल साइंस नॉट एन एक्सपेरिमेंटल साइंस बट आज के नीड क्या है मॉडर्न मेडिसिन या साइंटिस्ट को या साइंटिफिक कम्युनिटी को हमें दिखाने के लिए कि भाई योग काम करता है किसी लेवल पर हो सकता है मेंटल फिजिकल इमोशनल इंटेलेक्चुअल कॉग्नेटिव कुछ भी लेवल पर देखते जाइए आप वहाँ जो काम करते हैं कहने से तो कोई मानेगा नहीं उनको प्रूफ चाहिए वो भी ऑब्जेक्टिव एविडेंसेस चाहिए इसके लिए हमें बहुत जरूर जरूरत पड़ता है जो रिसर्च की रिसर्च की पैरामीटर्स की रिसर्च की आउटकम की इसलिए हमें शायद करना ही पड़ेगा तभी जैसे डॉक्टर खुशबू ने कहा कि भाई इतना हम रिसर्च होने के बाद भी हम आगे नहीं बढ़ पा रहे दैट इज द फैक्ट इन द सेंस तब तक कोई भी एक सिस्टम का कोई भी एक प्रैक्टिस का कोई भी एक नॉलेज बॉडी का एक्सेप्टेंस नहीं होगा पब्लिक लेवल पर आप जितना भी करिए वो जितना लेवल तक हम एक्सपेक्ट करते हैं कि भाई रीच होना चाहिए वहां तक वो रीच होगा नहीं दूसरी जो रिसर्च की बात कर रहे थे स्वामी रामा की जो बात सर ने कहा राहुल जी ने कहा उसमें एक एक्सपेरिमेंट इन लो, उन लोगों ने ये भी किए थे कि ही कुड एबल टू रेगुलेट दी ब्लड फ्लो टू वन हैंड in a different manner and another uh, uh, hand in a different manner 
मतलब मान के चलिए कि Uh, कुछ परसेंटेज या मान लीजिए फाइव परसेंट ऑफ ब्लड राइट हैंड में जा रहे हैं तो साइमल्टेनियसली उसी टाइम ओनली थ्री परसेंट ऑफ ब्लड कुड एबल टू गो टू दी लेफ्ट हैंड इस तरफ की एक वॉलंट्री कंट्रोल की जो कैपेसिटी है वो योगीस में होता है हालांकि अगेन ही ही वॉज ए रियल योगी इस वजह से हो सकता है कि वो पॉसिबल हुआ और पॉसिबल हो सकता है हर एक में लेकिन उस लेवल तक की प्रैक्टिस में हमें उतारना पड़ेगा प्रैक्टिस तक जाना पड़ेगा तभी वो पॉसिबल होगा दूसरी बात किसी ने पूछा कि जो योग निद्रा इफेक्टिव इन डिफरेंट ट्रीटमेंट के लिए क्या हो सकता है स्किजोफ्रीनिया या मेंटल कंडीशन पर <coughs> देखिए कुछ भी एक मेंटल कंडीशन पर है डिफरेंट लेवल्स ऑफ मेंटल कंडीशन हो सकता है अभी मान लीजिए स्किजोफ्रीनिया स्किजोफ्रीनिया मतलब हम आम भाषा में कहेंगे तो पागलपन है ना एल्यूनाटिक्स वहां क्या सिम्टम्स होते हैं आमतौर पर बहुत वायलेंट है है ना किसी को सुनना है ही नहीं मतलब जो भी आप गाइड करेंगे बाहर से अपना पेरेंट्स का हो सकता है अपना डॉक्टर का हो सकता है किसी का भी वो सुनने की स्थिति में नहीं है ही और शी बिहेव एज ही और शी वॉन्ट्स हमें उस लेवल से नीचे लाना पड़ेगा उन लोगों को मतलब रिसेप्टिव पहले बनाना पड़ेगा तभी हम कुछ भी ट्रीटमेंट उसको हम दे पाएंगे इसलिए स्किजोफ्रेनिक मान लीजिए बहुत वॉलेटाइल हो जाते हैं बहुत वायलेंट हो जाए तो इमीडिएटली डॉक्टर क्या करते हैं अनस्तीशा देकर उसको अनस्तीशा नहीं ट्रैंकुलाइजर देकर उसको सुलाना पड़ता है तब देखेंगे क्या होता है भाई आठ आठ घंटे तो थोड़ा शांति मिले है ना वो शांति पहले हमें किसी भी कंडीशन पर किसी और तरीके से भी हो सकता है उसको लाना पड़ेगा तभी हम योग को वो थोड़ा थोड़ा उसको इंट्रोड्यूस करा सकते हैं और उसका बेनिफिट उसको उसमें घुसा सकते हैं इसलिए हम कहते हैं कि अब हम कहते हैं मेडिटेशन इज वेरी गुड फॉर एंजाइटी आप मान लीजिए बहुत अनरेस्ट है रेस्टलेसनेस स्टेट में क्या आप मेडिटेशन में बैठ पाएंगे अब्जोल्यूटली नो मतलब मेरे हिसाब से तो वो तो होगा ही नहीं इसलिए हम बाकी सारा प्रैक्टिस करने के बाद शायद पतंजलि हैज वेरी ब्यूटीफुली डिफाइंड और गाइडेड इन दैट मैनर कि भाई अष्टांग योग की आसन प्राणायामा प्रत्याहारा धारणा उसके बाद ध्यान की जो प्रक्रिया है वो ऐसे शायद है ऐसे तो नहीं कहा कि भाई जो पहले मन में आए उसके हिसाब से उन्होंने शायद हमने बता दिया ऐसे तो नहीं हो सकता है वेरी सिस्टमेटिकली मेथोड मेथोडिकली उन्होंने जो प्रिस्क्राइब किया उसी हिसाब से हमें आगे बढ़ना है थोड़ा थोड़ा मास्टरी होगा आसन में तभी हम प्राणायाम में दस मिनट पंद्रह मिनट विदाउट एनी डिस्कम्फर्ट हम किसी भी आसन पर बैठ पाएंगे मास्टरी होगा तभी हम प्राणायाम करने की पात्र बनेंगे और लायक बनेंगे तभी जब हम प्राणायाम में थोड़ा मास्टरी बनेंगे तभी हम प्रत्याहार की तरफ जाने का योग्य बनेंगे और पात्र बनेंगे इस तरफ से हमें वो बेसिक एक अंडरस्टैंडिंग को समझना पड़ेगा शायद अभी मोस्टली कुछ स्टूडेंट्स अभी डिप्लोमा वाले हैं तो शुरुआत के होंगे कुछ लोग पढ़े जो क्वेश्चन से पता लगता है कि इंटरेस्ट है कुछ प्रीवियस बैकग्राउंड भी है जो थेरेपी इसलिए हमें बहुत सूक्ष्म रूप से उसको समझना पड़ेगा तभी हम उसको आ, अमल में ला सकते हैं उसको प्रिस्क्राइब कर सकते हैं और उसको इम्प्लीमेंट कर सकता है ज़्यादा नहीं बोलूँगा इस संदर्भ पर एक और बार राहुल जी को आ, अपनी तरफ से अपने संस्थान मोरार जी देश राष्ट्रीय संस्थान की तरफ से आप सब लोगों की ओर से दिल से धन्यवाद देता हूं ऐसे एक यूनिक टॉपिक हमारे सामने लाया और कुछ रिसर्च के बारे में कुछ इंटरेस्ट जगाने का काम किया और एक बार आप सब लोगों की ओर से धन्यवाद देते हुए आज के वक्ता को मैं अपनी वाणी को विराम देता हूं नमस्कार धन्यवाद Thank you sir for your insightful words that added significant value to today's session.
Now, to express our gratitude, I would like to request uh, Dr. Ayan Acharya, sir, to please present the expert of the day, Professor Rahul Gurg, the memento for a token of appreciation. Please, sir. Can we please have a round of applause? I now would like to thank our esteemed guest, Professor Rahul Garg, for taking time for us from his busy schedule, particularly for our students. We thank you, sir. I would like to extend my thank to Dr. Ayan Acharya, sir, Muhammad Tayyab Alam, sir, for making it to attend this session. And I also extend my thank to the faculty members, to the staff, and all the students who have participated in this session actively. Thank you all. And now at the end, I would like to thank our technical team, the entire technical support for their kind assistance in the session. We would now conclude the program with Shanti Pat. So for that, I would like to invite Ms. Madhu Khurana, ma'am. Please, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Um, please keep your back and next ray. Both uh, join your palms in Namaskar Mudra. Gently close your eyes. Inhale deeply while exhaling. Chant Om one time. After that, we'll do Shanti Part. Thank you.